In part one, we looked at doing the wide shot, an overview of the entire room, and how to photograph it and maintain the mood and the atmosphere of that room. And also, we didn't use specialist lighting equipment at all. But don't forget, little cameos, little details often sell a space far, far better than the entire overview. Now, the bar in here has all been beautifully sort of refurbished with all this lovely timber. It has a bit of a feel of a Highland shooting lodge sort of touch. And there's all sorts of little clues as to the character of the place going on all over. Now, obviously it's a bar, so there's all sorts of things we could do here with this shiny stuff, get in some close-ups and do some details there. But there's other little things over here, and I've already started setting up a shot with this. So here we have this sort of, I don't, know, I don't know what you call it, a little still life collection of bits and pieces, the bottle with the barnacles and all that sort of stuff. And it would make quite an interesting shot, which will really give the feel of this room by just shooting across here, everything that's on this shelf, a little bit of the tartan of the curtains if possible. I've got the camera set up over there on a tripod already. Now you may notice that it's actually on a little bit of a tilt. That's because it can often add a bit of a dynamism, but you've got to be careful with them. The reason I've tilted the camera is because I'm lining up this bottom edge of the shelf with the bottom edge of the frame of the picture, which kind of fools the viewer's eye into thinking it's straight when it obviously isn't. Now, I'm nearly set up. I know that this is just intruding, so I'm just going to ease this chair this way a bit, which should take it out of the shot. Exposure. The sun's gone in, so there isn't too much light coming in from behind. Um, we're going to expose for this area here. If some things go a little bit bright, it doesn't really matter. Even if the sun came out, you could still probably get quite an interesting picture. It'd all be very burnt out and washed out and quite sort of high key looking. So long as you make sure you expose for this bit, which is the important bit. So over to the camera. What have we got here? As you can see, the camera's on a bit of an angle. It's on a bit of a tilt. I'm lining up my shot, I'm using a longer lens. Rather than being in close and using a wide lens, it's far better to be kind of back a bit and keep that narrower field of view that you get with the longer lens to isolate things. Depth of field. <clears throat> I wanna, I'll probably do a couple of versions. I want to make sure that we can see the boxes and the still life and that's really sharp. So I'll probably do one with some front to back sharpness using a smaller aperture and do another with a slightly smaller, shallower depth of field. First off, exposure. By the way, I always use my live view just to check it in the back of the camera so I can see the shot. Can you see that all right, Jamie? Nice nod. So we're sort of looking through here, we've got a bit of the curtain going on there. We could possibly do with a bit of light in that. If I had some lighting equipment, I would, but it's still gonna give it a nice cozy sort of safe feeling. Live view's on, mirror lock up. I always use mirror lock up for this sort of thing because the mirror locks up, the camera won't vibrate when you fire the shutter. Also, if you have a VR lens and you're on a tripod, because you've got to use a tripod for this sort of thing, make sure you switch the VR off. Otherwise, it will make little adjustments within itself, and there's a good chance that the VR itself will cause a blurred picture. VR is vibration reduction, if you're not sure what I'm on about. Right, so I'm on mirror lockup. I'm focused, I use autofocus, and I'm focused on the leading edge of the first box that's this side. That's my point of focus. My aperture I'm gonna use is f14, because that should give me enough depth of field. Now you can check it just by shooting a picture and having a look in the back of the camera. So with mirror lock up on, first click, mirror jumps out of the way. Second click, it takes the picture. That's perfect. In fact, depth of field is almost the whole way along the window ledge. The second shot, I'm using a wide aperture, which will give me a very, very shallow depth of field, which is great for this stuff, because it'll really concentrate on the leading edge of the box. So let's run that out to f2.8. Speed up the shutter speed, I'm shooting manually. To make up for the wider aperture, I need a faster shutter speed. By the way, my ISO is down very low and I'm using a daylight white balance. So again, just look through here. Light meter says it's correctly exposed, so yeah, it's great. It's blurring the background, that looks really lovely, but the exposure isn't right. Because of the light behind the box, the camera's light meter is telling me 
and exposure for the average scene. I want to expose for the box. I need to brighten it up a bit. So despite the fact my light meter says that the exposure is bang on, I'm going to just dial in a slower shutter speed so I can maintain the wide aperture of about one stop, which should then increase the light level around the boxes. I don't mind if the background's a bit bright. In fact, for this sort of thing, it's really rather nice because it gives the room a nice sort of bright, oh, I want to go there feeling. That's good. I like that. That worked really well. So next we're going to have a look for some other little sort of cameos and spots. You don't need to watch me lugging my camera around, so when we've got the next one set up, I'll see you in a minute. All these little bits and pieces that are along here, these knickknacks, they all give you an impression of the atmosphere, of the mood of a place. If I walked in here, I wouldn't immediately go, oh, look, we've got pots and shells and lavender and all that stuff, because I'm a bloke, it just wouldn't register. But I'd really notice it if they weren't there, because the room wouldn't feel warm, homely, inviting. So wherever you can, look out for these sorts of things. Now, I've just got these things lit because they kind of add to it. Now, we're not going to see very much of them, to be honest with you, in the picture that I'm thinking of taking. But you would notice if there was one in the corner of the shot that wasn't lit, it would make it look lifeless. It would be a missing. So we've just got those lit up, so they're along the top. It's all about detail. There are two shots here that I really, really like. We've got this top shelf with the lavenders and, and all this stuff going on and the shells. But I also really like the light along here and these, you know, little home-cooked ham, egg and chips and ploughmans and all that stuff. So there's two shots we can get from one place. Something that's going to be a bit tricky in here is the white balance. We've got blue daylight coming in from windows. We've got yellow tungsten from there and we've got a bit more yellow coming off these candles as well. Let's turn that around that way because hopefully it'll look better. So what I'm going to need to do is get my white balance card. I shoot raw and I colour correct after. I'm going to use the daylight white balance, but I want a point of reference. I want something. This is going to be a bit tricky. I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to take my first shot so that's in it, so that I've got a white balance. So first off, let's go back here and just make sure the camera's right. Put on my live view. So I can make sure it's there. Yeah, I quite like that shot. You've often got to be a contortionist because it'd be really good if the door wasn't here, but it is here. So, oh, I like that. That looks pretty good. The sun's going in and out like mad at the moment and it's starting to obliterate the candles. Right, back to my mirror lockup. Focus on the lavenders. So I use the autofocus, single point, to focus where I want to focus. Once I've focused it, I switch autofocus off so the focus can't shift when I'm pressing the shutter button. My exposure says, right, I'm using f2.8 at the moment. Oh good, the sun's gone in. Shallow depth of field. So we really concentrate on the lavenders. That looks like it'll work well. I've got the card in there for the white balance, but the light changed because the sun went in. These are all things you have to watch out for. It doesn't matter if that's sharp or not. Right, we're going to do this quickly because I don't want the sun to come back out because it will change the colour temperature in the room. So, white card out. Focused on the lavender using single point autofocus. Check the exposure. At f2.8, I'm using a wide aperture. I'm using this pro lens with a super wide aperture because it gives me this lovely shallow depth of field so I can blur things in front of and behind my subjects. Mirror lock up, cable release so the camera doesn't vibrate. And I think that's the shot. I'm going to shoot another with a smaller aperture. I'm going to f8, f2.8. I'm going to go to f5. Don't forget, you've got to adjust your shutter speed as you change your aperture to keep the exposure right. Because f5 is giving me just a little bit more depth of field. It's only tiny, it really is, but it just means I'm sure that those are sharp. In fact, I'm going to do one more at f8 because there's nothing worse than getting back and finding that the shot you want isn't sharp enough front to back. Here we go. In fact, as I go between them, if I go from 2.8 to the F8, you can see a bit of a difference. Okay, so the other shot was the 
little blackboards hanging below there. So from the same place, and using much the same sort of technique, I'm going to have the camera fair. I'm going to have the camera level for this one, or fairly. Don't be afraid to move it around just a little bit to get the shot looking how you want it. I'm actually going to. Now I'm going to stay here. I quite like that. Pull that back a bit. The one I'm going to photograph. The one I'm going to sorry concentrate on is going to be the one that says the Mill Plowmans because it's in just the right place. Now you may not really be able to read these terribly well in the finished shot but that's not so much what it's about it's more about giving a feeling of the place yeah I quite like that I've also placed the point which is going to be sharp in the picture onto a third so it's in a corner the foreground's going to be soft the background's going to be soft so there we go I've got my focus where I want it there we go it beeped now I switch all to focus off I'm just playing with the zoom just a tiny, tiny bit because it's hard for me to, I'd rather not play with the zoom, but I have to because I can't move. There's a wall in the way. If I didn't have that wall, I'd just move further back because I want to get all four of those little blackboards striding across the shot. There it is there, good. Okay, we're focused up. My aperture is still on f8 from the last shot the lights change because the sun's going in and out and also it's different light in that area i'm going to do a test exposure of about a stop and a half overexposed because all these little lights all these things here are pumping out brightness and your light meter is going to look at those and it's going to say oh that's bright i need to darken it I want that to be bright. I want this to have a bright, warm, nice, lively, exciting sort of a feel to it. This is the one we're choosing as our point of focus up here. So the shot will be a kind of, we've got this one in one corner, these are going across, that's in the sort of right hand lower third, and then that one's disappearing. This will be the sharp area. So here we go. It's about thinking through your shot, thinking how do I want this to look? What do I need to do to the camera? So F8 will give me a shallowish depth of field with this long lens, because long lenses have an inherently shallow depth of field. So let's lock the mirror up, fire the shutter. Yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna do, let me just check my histogram. I'm gonna do one just slightly, slightly darker, because, so I speed up the shutter speed a bit. I'm on a tenth of a second because I'm using a low, low ISO. The sun's going in and out like crazy. That's better. I'm just going to try one with a very, very shallow depth of field. So I'm going to whiz that round to f2.8, adjust the shutter speed accordingly so we don't totally overexpose. Keep going on the light. The light level's going up and down like crazy. Mirror lock up, take it. Yeah, that looks very nice. That shallow depth of field really focuses you on the menu board. Right, so there's one more I want to show you, and for that, I'm going to change lenses. So we've got a wide angle lens because I want to get this kind of bar area thing. I like the shininess of the taps, I like the pumps, we've got the wooden bar and we've got the window and it gives you a nice, it's not the whole room but it gives you a feeling of an area and I'm going to use the wide lens because it's really really intimate, it makes you feel like you're actually there. I'm going to remove these bar mats, reason being I want to see all this beautiful wood. So I'm just going to make this a little bit minimalistic. I'm just going to take those off the bar for a moment. Now, white balance is going to be tricky because we've got tungsten light coming down here. I'm using my 10 millimeter lens. That's a very, very, very wide angle lens. I have also stupidly left my mini tripod at home because I need a little tripod because I want the camera to be about here. So what I'm going to do is the old fashioned use your elbows as a tripod and be very careful to make sure my shutter speed isn't too slow. I'm just going to move these out of the way because I don't want to knock them on the floor. And I want to make sure I've got a white balance. So let's first off pop my white balance card into the shot and make sure my camera's set correctly because I've just swapped bodies. It isn't set correctly. Go back to raw. There it is. Good. Everything else is correct. Good. Yes. So I'm just going to take a rough quick shot here. With these sorts of things, it doesn't have to be sharp. It's purely to have this in here, so I've got a white reference. 
pop this over here. So 10 millimeters, I've got my aperture at f8 with a 10 mil lens at f8. That's going to give me quite a lot of depth of field considering because it's a short lens. Short lenses have a um, inherently deep depth of field. So the first shot I think I'm going for is to get in close here. We've got these sort of things here that say Guinness and Thatcher's and Grolsch and all the rest of it, which you can't see, but it does. So I'm just going to focus on the word Guinness, very carefully move up and down. There's some little bits of polish. These are things to watch for. These are little details. It's only tiny. Can you see in here, there's little bits of white polish, which has got caught up into the black. So, with a little bit of tissue and your thumbnail, you can just sort of get them out of there. Now, they're the sort of things you don't notice when you're in here having a beer, but you will notice them in a photo. So there's no point you filming me do it, just come back when I've done it. There we go, that's better. Pop that over there on the table. Best camera. The light levels come up a bit, which is brilliant because we've got a little bit more light to play with and Numpty here forgot his small tripod. So let's get our shot. Where's Guinness gone? There's Guinness. Now, be careful when you're doing this because you can move yourself up and down. If I'm here, I can't read the word Guinness at all. Let me take the shot. Because there's a reflection on this shiny surface of something dark, so I'm losing the word Guinness. But just by raising myself up that much, that's all it is. I've gone from there to there. I can. read the word Guinness, because I've changed my angle, so the reflection is now of the light wood of the bar and not the dark curtain over there. Okay. Little things to watch out for when you're doing this is are things like that as you move up and down. So that's good. Make sure the camera's still. One more shot from here. Correct exposure. Breathe carefully. When you haven't got your tripod, good. I'm going to do a couple of different versions very quickly because we've already, Jane and I've already disagreed about which looks best. I'm going to try one from down low. Again, focusing on the Guinness, looking along the bar. There we go. I'm going to do another one from slightly higher up. Just carefully. You never know what someone else will like. There's what you like isn't necessarily going to be the same. That's what they like. So there we go. There's some nice wide angle detail bar shots for you. Right, new shot. Notice I'm down low with a long lens. Very often an unusual angle can look very interesting. What I'm interested in is this beautifully weathered sort of piece of wood against the optics of the bar. But what I'm really interested in is the wood rather than the bar. So I want a very, very shallow depth of field. So there's just a hint of out of focus, beautiful bottles of single molten stuff going on in the background. But what we're really seeing is this piece of wood. Again, the light's weird, we've got lots of yellow. So I have already put my white card at the bottom there and done a shot so I've got a color reference. You didn't need to see me doing that. The camera's down here, low, big heavy tripod. The aperture is set at f2.8, so it's a very, very wide aperture, very, very shallow depth of field with this lens. At this distance, my depth of field is probably only about that much. It should just about capture this, and everything behind is gonna be soft. So we've done the white. I'm on full zoom, 200 millimeters. I'm using ISO 200 for the fine grain, but we've been using that all day long. I always check in live view to make sure that it's okay. And then now what I need to do, the lights change, so I'm just gonna quickly check my exposure. No, it's all right, it's changed back down again. In fact, it's getting darker, so let's do it quickly. First press, lock up the mirror, let the camera stop wobbling. Second press, take the shot. That's a very, very strong, powerful piece of wood there. I'm just gonna do another one with a smaller aperture. Let's go to F8. Readjust the shutter speed. Notice I'm doing all this manually. Just have another look through. And also, of course, use a tripod. The beauty of tripods is, look, I'm gonna think about the composition because it's not going anywhere. I've already set it. Right, mirror up, press the button. Takes the picture. 
So as I flick between those two, you can see there's a huge difference in what you can see behind the wood. I actually prefer the very shallow depth of field. I'll do one more in between the two. So let's take that to about five, six, readjust the shutter speed, correct exposure, take the shot. That's better. It's between the two. Eight is a bit too sharp. Five, six is about right. And two, eight is possibly a bit too soft. But again, it's up to the person you're doing the pictures for because they might like something which you don't. There we go, I'm gonna do one more. I'm just gonna lower the camera slightly while you're in a position. It's always worth, you know, taking advantage of everything. I quite like the gold taps on the beers. So what I've done is tilt the camera down a bit using the same focus point, the same depth of field and all that. <laughs> Hello. We guess all right. We're getting in everyone's way now. So we're going to take that shot straight through there. I'll just wait for those guys to... <laughs> just waiting for... Then we're... Thank you. That's all right. Right, so here we go. And take the shot. Just one more like that which has just got those bar taps in there, which I think looks just a little bit more interesting. So there we go. There's your kind of guide to shooting details of interiors, which can really, really sell a location and a place, the mood, the atmosphere, the feeling, the homeliness of it, often way, way better than a big overview.